Who'd want to be a teacher in 2022? No one, apparently. Mark McGowan is under fire because the skill shortage, which has infected his government, has extended to the state school system. Teachers have woken up to the fact that the career they thought would look like this... You're on your own, as you certainly will be shortly. And you'll have to do it for yourself sometimes, won't you? Actually looks more like this. While the students Robin Williams taught in Dead Poet Society stand on their desks... Even though it may seem silly or wrong... The kids at Smile College in Rockingham stand on your car. <laughs> and then there are the students that just want to kill you. It's a hard job. Fronting a class full of kids who don't want to be there is a difficult job even for a well-qualified and experienced teacher. 94. Welcome back, nerd. McGowan's solution to the current shortage is to send in unqualified and inexperienced teachers. Looking out the window, that's a paddling. Staring at my sandals, that's a paddling. Students who are yet to graduate with their degree are being allowed into classes in cases where a qualified person can't be found. Not really a solution. No. And shortchanging kids on the qualifications of their teachers has been tried before. In 2008, the Rudd Federal Government wanted to shorten teacher training programs. Julia Gillard was Education Minister at the time. She wanted super bright grads to be fast-tracked ahead of less qualified students. The plan came unstuck when parents realised the Doogie Houses would have as little as six weeks prep before being sent into schools, which made the Prime Minister wonder whether people so inexperienced could teach even basic English. This f***ing language. Not that that's a barrier to high office at the moment. Uh, I think it's 5.4, uh, sorry. Putting unqualified teachers in charge ain't new at a state level either. It's a stopgap measure that's been around for decades. It's been back in vogue recently as different governments have grappled with different skills shortages in different economic upswings they brought on themselves by failing to invest in training during different economic downturns. Liz Constable tried it when she was Education Minister in the new Colin Barnett government in 2008 and it failed to relieve a staffing crisis a year later. Before Constable was Education Minister, the office was held by this guy. Oh, so young. Mark McGowan was Education Minister in Alan Carpenter's government and he was smashed over the issue of unqualified teachers fronting classes and the broader issue of teacher shortages. In the mid-noughties, he was hundreds of teachers short and his solution was to lure retired chalkies back to class. He got two. Paddling the school canoe? Oh, you better believe that's a paddling. Then he tried to lure teachers from over east. He got about 10. He started paying teachers more. And then he offered them bonus payments on top of that. Although that check came with the rider they'd have to clean their own classrooms before they could cash it. 15 years ago, the teacher shortage was so bad, McGowan considered expanding the school day to 10 hours. How does making the day longer help? It allowed teachers who taught subjects in demand to skip between schools in morning and afternoon shifts, but promised the added bonus of making the kids tired and compliant. The Republican-controlled House of Representatives, in an effort to alleviate the effects of the... anyone? Anyone? The Great Depression. When that didn't work, McGowan looked at forcing students to travel to other schools to find a suitably qualified teacher should their own campus not have one, which means you had to catch a bus to your contemporary dance class. Why be a teacher when you can earn twice as much in mining? There's a lot of money in the Pilbara at the moment, where it's billionaires at 10 paces. In the red corner, weighing in at $30.7 billion, is Andrew Forrest. In the blue corner, weighing in at a leaner $1.75 billion, is Chris Ellison. Why the beef? Nice. Ellison wants to use driverless road trains, 340 tonnes each, to haul iron ore to Onslow where it will be shipped to China. The problem is the road he intends to build to do that comes very close to Forrest's Mindaroo Station. It's Twiggy's ancestral home and few people would dare mess with him over it. Challenge me. Forrest's Harvest Road business, which runs the cattle operation on Mindaroo, reckons Ellison hasn't considered the effect his thundering road trains will have on their cows. But how do the Mindaroo cows get to market? On thundering road trains. But that's not the point. One of the big issues is the impact of dust. The Onslow Steel Project is being developed by Ellison's flagship company. Your day at Minres starts now. Minrez is sitting on tenements holding 1.3 billion tonnes of iron ore. 
Ellison reckons he can export it without much dust because the entire transport operation, even the port, will be sealed. But his neighbours in the area aren't convinced. As well as appeasing forest, Ellison has to make good with Chevron, which is concerned about the project's environmental impact on the ecologically fragile area around Onslow. Doesn't Chevron... Run a $50 billion LNG plant that draws millions of tonnes of carbon-riddled gas from offshore wells to a sprawling industrial complex on the mainland just south of Onslow? Yes. Again, that's not the point, though. Then what is the point? Finally, Ellison must bring around Japanese company Mitsui, which is also concerned about the Onslow Steel Project's environmental impact on its neighbouring business. That business being the production of a substance that's renowned for its environmental friendliness, salt. It's worried the purity of its product will be affected by Ellison's passing trucks. Oh my god! Cement! You just drank cement! <laughs> Minres needs state and federal approvals before it can do anything, and is now dangling a dust-covered carrot. Seven billion dollars in royalties. Which buys a lot of teachers. I'm Ben Harvey. For more up late, click the subscribe button below.